Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you from one of my plywood worm beds in the rain. Seems like the only time I can find to make a video right now is when it's raining. But, like we used to say when I was in the Army, it don't rain in the Army, it rains on the Army. When you're a worm farmer or a farmer, you get rained on, no big deal. So, what I'm going to talk about today is recommendations on what to feed your worms. Specifically three... Let's see, I gotta get up my other Three areas. I can't do three fingers with the other hand for some reason. Three areas. One, we're gonna talk about what you should feed your worms in general. Two, recommended supplementary feeds. Well, I think that's what most people want to know about. And three, of course, we're gonna talk about what not to feed your worms. Now, what you should in general feed your worms the most is what you recycle, your kitchen waste when you're a small-time worm farmer in particular. And even to a, lar uh, to a large degree, if you're a larger worm farmer, you can get uh, kitchen waste from um, uh, restaurants and places like that. And I do that some myself. Uh, there's a couple of restaurants that help me out with that. And I do take coffee grounds from the building I work at at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And I get about 20 gallons of that a week. And of course, you can get it from uh, uh, coffee shops such as Starbucks. Uh, but a worm farm is typically recycling center because you can recycle your kitchen's waste, your paper products, anything that ever lived is biodegradable and can pretty much be ate with the worms except for the things I'm going to mention at the end. So now uh, that said, uh, how do you supplement your worms? So we talked about the kitchen waste. What do you supplement your worms? Supplemental feeding is one of the big issues. So we're going to look inside this plywood box and I'm going to give you a recommendation here. Some recommendations. So if you look here, you will see I've got a uh, bag in here. And this bag is uh, chicken. Uh, this is your uh, chick starter grower. Chick starter grower. Now, this is organic, basically, not GMO, actually, GMO free. Now, for some reason, feed is labeled as uh, organic or GMO free. The GMO free means specifically that they did not use GMOs in the making of and the growing of the grains. So the cool thing is the bag itself is worm food. You can see that I am feeding this bag to the worms and I just put it in here and they're already starting to eat it. They're already on it. They're already eating to it. So again, a worm farm is an organic system and uh, they will eat and recycle your waste so you can feed them the the feed in the bag, which you see here, uh, distributed around, it gets moist. Uh, you have to moisturize it, put it in here, and then uh, the worms eat that, and then give them the bag. So, what I recommend for supplemental feeding is non-GMO or organic feeds. Now, either one is fine. You don't want the glyphosate and all that stuff that's going to mess up your worm beds if you want good, clean worm castings uh, and worms that's going to survive. Uh, the worm farms that use uh, cotton holes as their bedding predominantly uh, find after successive generations today because they're using so much glyphosate that they cannot grow worms. Now I've had people fuss at me for talking about glyphosate on my Facebook channel. But guess what gentlemen? Uh, cotton holes used to be the best thing, gin trash as it's also called, to grow worms in. Worms loved it, they grew like crazy, and that was wonderful once upon a time. If you try to raise worms in that stuff today, they will die after a few generations. Worm farms are doing that, lose their worms and the ability to raise worms. They're gone, they're wiped out. So that's one of the big things that's knocked down the worm population. So you can talk and argue me all you want. Uh, there are tests from Europe, independent laboratories, which shows animals successfully fed um, through multiple generations, glyphosate type feeds become sterile. And that's happening to the worms because they produce their generations real fast. And so I know people are going to get mad and jump up and down about that. Fine, I don't care. Rant on. The worm farms that, 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 that use that stuff are the proof in the pudding. They're gone. <laughs> They don't exist, so stay away from GMOs. Um, it has been the case that GMO-free feed has been very exceedingly expensive and hard to find in our region, but uh, that is changing rapidly. There's more and more people becoming conscious of that. This GMO chick starter now 
cost me about $13 for a 50 gallon bag. Uh, when I first started getting GMO free, uh, feed, I was buying it from a feed company in California. It was actually Modesto Mills. And shipping it here, and the shipping cost was at least half the cost of the feed. And I was paying $80 for a 50 pound bag. That's high. That's very hard to make any kind of money when you're paying that much money for feed. Uh, but I've done that. So bear in mind that uh, the options are a lot better now. We do have the uh, uh, non-GMO feeds. There are organic feeds. You can buy organic mini pellets. That's another good recommendation. If anytime you get the mini pellets, they are water soluble. When you moisturize them, they will break down. Mini pellets break down better and you can get them full organic for a similar price. Maybe $13 or $16 for a 50 pound bag. Now that said, as I mentioned in other videos, the price of food is expected to skyrocket. There's going to be grain shortages. So because the Midwest has been flooding, planted's going late, USDA may be overestimating what's going to be available. So maybe the prices hadn't caught up yet. So be aware of that. But it might be a good time just to store up some extra feed if you got a place to put it where the rats won't get to it. Wouldn't be a bad idea. So of course the best things to feed your worms are the organic stuff. Uh, uh, your uh, recycle your kitchen waste first and foremost uh, or the waste of other kitchens your papers and things like that. Paper has chitin in it which is good for plants and worms and uh, this uh, chicken starter feed has a good high protein which is good and helpful to the worms. So uh, I feed a mixture of different things that helps keep their, balance, their diet balanced. If you're only feeding one thing to your worms the diet will not be as well balanced. Now I said I was going to cover three things. So we've covered what you most should use which is recycling. We've covered uh, my recommended supplemental feeds which is non-GMO or organic feeds such as the, the hen, uh, chicken starter feed uh, which is non-GMO or organic mini pellets. And you can get them from different brands from different sources. Now finally my final recommendation now that's just for supplemental feed. My final recommendation uh, is what not to feed. Now, I mentioned this in my five key things video and other places but again the worm's body is like the inside of your mouth. It's soft tissue. It's very sensitive. So beware, very aware of feeding them anything that's acidic because worms don't like acid, we know that, or anything that's uh, real spicy. Uh, I would not feed anything that's a dairy product uh, not because worms couldn't eat it or meat, but because it attracts pest to your worm bed. You don't want pest. Uh, now the acidic feeds. I have seen where the worm farms have done videos demonstrating the use of orange pills in the beds. And they had it on a manageable scale and the worms did okay. Alright, that's fine. But I did try orange citrus pill ends myself. It turned my bed in acidic and those beds got just filled up with soldier fly larva and uh, that was the beginning of a battle with soldier fly larva. Now hey, they're great if you're raising uh, larva to feed chickens. I don't have any chickens as of yet and soldier fly larva will eat up your bedding unlike uh, worms. They just flat convert it all to soldier fly uh, larva protein and that's good like I said if you're feeding chickens but if you're trying to make compost you don't want soldier fly larva. So the downside of the citrus is it makes your bed more acidic and as I mentioned in the five key things video and other places uh, the key thing about controlling insects in your bed is to keep the acid level low and to have a, a, a base you know somewhat on the base side just keep the acidity level low in your bed neutral to maybe a slightly uh, alkaline and uh, the best way to accomplish that is to use pure crushed dolomite somebody thought I said dynamite no, 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 no. Dolomite is limestone. Crushed. Pure crushed limestone. If you buy the garden lime, it is chemically treated, hydrolyzed, and the chemicals can be toxic to your worms. Don't get that stuff. If it comes in a big bag and it's kind of fluffy, wrong stuff. If it looks like a dog food bag. But if it comes in, if a 40 pound bag is about yay big, that's about right because it's dense. It's heavy. And it can have a mineral listing on the back, including things like magnesium, which is good for your garden and your other systems. We have magnesium shortage in our diet. So that's really good to add to your compost. So dolomite, pure crushed dolomite is wonderful. You can use a uh, blend up puree uh, eggshells. Maybe use oyster shells where it's crushed and powdered. 
uh, that's other ways to get the uh, same effect and uh, so you're looking I guess for sodium bicarbonate bicarbonate um, so that's what you need to avoid for your worm beds now if you like this video be sure to click like subscribe to my channel and bang the up don't update notification bell to support my channel I do have links below you can order worms from me I ship you around uh, you can also um, uh, support me by clicking on my patron supply if you're a prepper you can uh, you know this is the perfect time to buy prepping supplies before the prices uh, skyrocket on the food because uh, you can get them really cheap right now like two dollars a meal if you're buying a year supply and there's other a lot of different bonus and uh, deals down there just check my patron supply link also check on the uh, tree leaf market it's still a good time to be planting for your uh, garden and doing garden prep so that's a good thing to do so anyway thank you for watching